Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Ukraine is our enemy being funded by the Democrats. I will stress this again. One of the greatest enemies of our nation right now is Ukraine. This may come as a surprise, but the man you just heard from was allegedly paid by the Russian government to spread pro-Russian propaganda. Shocking, I know. Don't know who to trust these days. Now, it seems like he was unknowingly being used by the Russian government because he's both dumb and greedy, but it's easy to see why they take an interest with him with commentary like that, and also after seeing him tweet obsessively about an American civil war for years. But he's not the only one because the other so-called talent that was involved includes white supremacist Lauren Southern, closeted homosexual Benny Johnson, and out and proud conservative homosexual Dave Rubin. Now, additionally, there's Lauren Chen, a fellow right-wing grifter who was fired from the Blaze TV because she's also involved, albeit in a different way. Semaphore reports, quote, Chen and her husband, Liam Donovan, are the co-founders of Tenant Media, a previously obscure media company that paid eye-popping sums to right-wing influencers to produce videos that echoed Russian propaganda and other right-wing talking points according to an indictment. Now, if you're wondering how much money we're talking about here, because eye-popping is certainly a term to use when you're talking about money, well, according to the indictment, we're talking approximately $8.7 million between October 2023 and August 2024, distributed among just three of the six commentators. Commentator one is either Dave Rubin or Benny Johnson, and commentator two is Tim Pool. So needless to say, this was a very, very, very lucrative deal. And I don't know if they saw any red flags when they agreed to this, although they should, I'd argue, but we'll get to that later. But I mean, even if they did and were smart enough to pick up on the clues that this was a little bit suspicious, it was easier for them to overlook them because, again, they're greedy and they're also dumb. But to be clear, the indictment doesn't specifically name Tim Pohl or Dave Rubin or anyone else. It doesn't even name Tenant Media, but the indictment does give us enough information to piece it all together with varying degrees of success. For example, The Guardian hilariously found out that it was Tim Pohl, but they thought that this random dude in a beanie was Tim Pohl. <laughs> And then when it started to go viral, they removed the picture from Tim Pool altogether. Now, Andrew Lawrence shared this screenshot from a CBS report blurring the face of one of these commentators. Hmm, it's hard to figure out who this is in particular, but, um, you know, maybe you can take a guess. I think they're trying to protect the identity of the individual here, but uh, I think most people know who the fuck this is, so this is just so funny. But for the most part, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious Tim Pool and others are the ones that this indictment is talking about, and they've all released statements about this denying culpability and calling themselves victims. So we'll get to their responses after we dive into the indictment itself. So AP reports, one criminal case disclosed by the Justice Department accuses two employees of RT, a Russian state media company, of covertly funding a Tennessee-based content creation company with nearly $10 million to publish English language videos on social media platforms, including TikTok and YouTube, with messages in favor of the Russian government's interests and agenda, including about the war in Ukraine. The nearly 2,000 videos posted by the company have gotten more than 16 million views on YouTube alone, prosecutors said. The two defendants, Konstantin Kalashnikov and Elena Afonsevia, are charged with conspiracy to commit money laundering and violating the Foreign Agents Registration Act. They are at large. It was not immediately clear if they had lawyers. The Justice Department says the company did not disclose that it was funded by RT and that neither it nor its founders registered as required by law as an agent of a foreign principal. So to recap, the lion's share of the money went to the influencers, Dave Rubin, Tim Pool, etc. And to put it into perspective for you, the last Super Bowl had 123 million plus viewers and ads for that cost around $7 million, give or take. But $8.7 million was distributed to just three of the six commentators, which amounts to $2.9 million each, assuming it was distributed equally. And they got a total of 16 million views across 2,000 videos on YouTube alone, which means that the Russian government spent more than corporations spend on Super Bowl ads to have these right-wing grifters spread their bullshit. That is 
insane. And if you're wondering what they were supposed to spread, well, these were the talking points. The first sentence is pretty telling. We would like to reiterate that in the United States, there are no pro-Russian and or pro-Putin mainstream politicians or sufficiently large numbers of influencers and voters. There is no point of justifying Russia and no one to justify it to. All American politicians and influencers are patriots and supporters of American supremacy. Now, pause right there for a moment. If you created a partnership deal with the media company and you were handed this document, would those first couple of sentences not set off some red flags for you? Would the alarm bells not start to go off in your head? Well, if you're dumb and greedy, the answer is no, because you wouldn't see the red flags because there'd just be dollar signs in your eyes blocking said red flags, right? And that's assuming they even read this in the first place, which you could probably argue that they did not because these don't seem like the brightest people. And even though this is very lucrative, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they just signed it and didn't think twice about it. But the specific topics include the economy, risk of job loss for, quote, white Americans. That's interesting. Privileges for people of color, perverts and disabled. Very interesting talking point. Uh, then skip to line five. Threat of crime coming from people of color and immigrants, including new immigrants from Ukraine. Very interesting talking points. Overspending on foreign policy at the expense of interests of white U.S. citizens. Skip to eight. Our guys will die in Ukraine. Now, section four tells us who the target audience is, and it's obviously U.S. political party A's voters, meaning Republicans, Trump supporters, and uh, conservatives, as well as white Americans. In other words, they were being paid to spread white supremacist propaganda to white people and indirectly support Russia over Ukraine by talking about the spending on the war, as well as the risk that it could pose to the lives of American troops. So the content isn't necessarily explicitly pro-Russia, but as you can see, they were expected to promote Russia's interests in a subtle way. And to be clear, the indictment isn't alleging criminal wrongdoing by Tim Poole, Dave Rubin, and the other influencers. In fact, if you read it, it explicitly suggests that they were duped. And I do believe that they were duped because we're talking about imbeciles here. There's no evidence to suggest that they purposefully acted as assets to the Russian government. They were merely useful idiots who, you know, parrot whatever somebody tells them to if there's money involved. And in response, they're claiming to be useful idiots essentially as well, but they're using a specific word to describe themselves. They're calling themselves victims. Dave Rubin tweeted, these allegations clearly show that I and other commentators were victims of this scheme. I knew absolutely nothing about any of this fraudulent activity, period. Benny Johnson says, a year ago, a media startup pitched my company to provide content as an independent content contractor. Our lawyers negotiated a standard arm's length deal, which was later terminated. We are disturbed by the allegations in today's indictment, which make clear that myself and other influencers were victims in this alleged scheme. My lawyer Lawyers will handle anyone who states or suggests otherwise. So he's threatening to sue anybody who accuses him of purposeful wrongdoing. Hmm, interesting. So Tim Pool writes, should these allegations prove true, I, as well as the other personalities and commentators, were deceived and are victims. I cannot speak for anyone else at the company as to what they do or to what they are instructed. He later says, Putin is a scumbag, Russia sucks donkey ball. So that proves he uh, he's not in the tank for Russia. Now, he also added a Ukraine flag emoji and made some joke tweets about being pro-war and wanting to fund Israel and Ukraine. Now, I did check Lauren Chen's timeline and didn't see a response. Response. She was, however, talking about the trans lobby. So, you know, I'm assuming that's more important right now. But Ben Shapiro did weigh in and he's defending right wing colleagues of his. And he's pointing out that the indictment claims that Lauren Chen and her husband allegedly deceived Dave Rubin, Tim Pool, and others on purpose with regard to where the money came from that they offered them. But when it comes to the six influencers like Tim Pool and Dave Rubin, to be clear, there's no evidence to suggest criminal wrongdoing on their part or that they knew the Russian government was involved. But I've got to say, it is weird that they're calling themselves victims because most victims don't get millions and millions of dollars for being victimized, for getting duped, right? They're not losing anything. They're not being asked to return the money even. The only thing that's at risk here is their reputation, but the right-wing audiences that they've cultivated are already predisposed to believe whatever they say, so it's a win-win for them. You get a bunch of money, and um, 
you look like a truth teller to your audience. Either way, they're not going to question this or doubt you. But I will say in hindsight, certain comments that Tim Pool has made are pretty interesting in light of this news. For example, in 2019, he tweeted, the people screaming about Trump working for Russia are the same people demanding social media censor, quote, misinformation. Stop listening to these people. That is so fucking rich. Now, there's also this claim that he made in a show with Emma Vicklin, where she was explaining to him why the right is dominating the left in the independent media space. And listen to what he says in response. You guys have a lot more money than the left wing media space. We just try to combat it a little bit. I think the issue with that, I can understand why you'd say that, but it looks like this, this is a great way to kick off the show, actually, yeah. like the start of the culture. Mm -hmm. war. Um, I actually don't think the whatever this space has more money because this is a fractured independent space of varying ideologies. Tim, I'm in your compound right now. Yeah, I'm rich. And Sam's had way more subscribers than me for a long, long time. Right, right. And he's been, and he just like hit, and I'm not saying this to be like me, and I'm saying if he doesn't know how to turn revenue, the issue is more so you need like a COO or somebody who's gonna say, here's how we provide something to a, a market that generates revenue so we can expand our business. So we're we're uh, better at that here, I suppose, is the easy way to put well, it. Well, no, because what you say here is more attractive to investors and advertisers. I mean, we're basically we no only members and uh, OK. Come on. Emma is absolutely right. And he knows it. If you say things that the capitalist class wants to hear, it's just a fact of reality that you're going to have more opportunities because you're not a threat to power. You're not a threat to capital. Put aside Russia for a moment. Why do you think Rumble which is funded by billionaires like Peter Thiel, is only offering right-wingers very lucrative contracts. Why do you think that is? Hmm. Is it because they just really think that Tim Pool or others who are funded on Rumble, I don't know if Tim Pool's funded by Rumble, to be clear, but like, are we assuming that the billionaires just think that they have unique insight that's really necessary for the world to hear? No, it's because they're doing propaganda for the ruling class, right? So that's why the online left pales in comparison to the online right. But if you talk to a Republican, they actually think the opposite is true because they genuinely believe that George Soros is funding all of us. Spoiler alert, he's not. But when it comes to, you know, foreign disinformation campaigns, let this just be a little bit of a warning to you. Be very cautious about who you choose to trust online, especially during election seasons. Always question motives and be skeptical of the people who you're listening to, especially if they're not transparent about their funding, because there's almost certainly more bad faith actors and useful idiots getting paid to say things they don't actually believe that haven't been exposed yet. You know, it's true of corporate media, but it's also true of independent media as well. So you need to be skeptical of what you consume, question people, question motives, and that includes me and other people on the left as well. We have to be responsible consumers of media, both corporate and independent, because if we're not, we could get duped and be just as vulnerable as Temple's audience. And I'm not trying to make you paranoid, but I'm just telling you that you have to understand that there are a lot of people who don't actually care about getting to the truth contrary to what they say right? They just want to make money. They have no core principles. They just want to make money. It's just the job for them, right? It's true in corporate media. It's true in independent media. And that's really unfortunate because I had hoped that this space would be good for American political discourse as a member of independent media myself. But unfortunately, that's not the case. It's a cesspool. There's a lot of bad faith actors, probably as much bad faith actors in indie media as there are in corporate media. So you just have to be careful, especially when we're talking about the far right in this space, because they're the ones who are more likely to spread bullshit for money because capital is interested in what they have to say because it's not a threat to capital. Whereas if we start talking about how capitalism is bad on the left, hmm, they're not gonna like us very much. So there's a reason why they're successful and we're not. But at the end of the day, I'm choosing principles over money and they're doing the opposite. And I'm not alone. There are other people on the left who are choosing principles and people over money. That doesn't mean that you should automatically trust what we say. Again, still be skeptical and fact check us, but just be more responsible with what you consume online because a lot of it is bullshit. Again, especially during election seasons. Right, 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 right
in recovery mode my brain ideas recovery mode my brain ideas